Hello folks, welcome back to a little bit more about atoms and the periodic table, which is our current topic. Um, we're going to have a look today and see what everything in the entire universe, including you and me, uh, the chair you're sitting on, the gas you're breathing, we're going to have a look at what they're all made of. And the answer is, of course, they're all made of atoms. There's nothing in the entire universe that's not made of atoms. So the learning outcomes that I'd like to look at uh, in this topic are, number one, I would like to look at the size, perhaps, of an atom. I would like to look at the structure of an atom. And I'm going to split that into two areas. I'm going to have a look at the, the even tiny little particles called subatomic particles. So we'll have a look at what particles make up atoms. We'll have a look at their properties. And we will have a look at how they are arranged. Um, and the assignment for this at the moment, for this week, next week coming up, sorry, um, is going to be your job is to build a model of an atom using stuff from around your house. Anything you like. Make it as imaginative as possible. Um, you can do it from plain, from just 2D, from a drawing. If you I mean, if you're really stumped, you could do a nice detailed drawing of an atom if you can't find anything. On the other hand, if you have any materials around that you could stick onto a page, you can start to build up into a 3D version, more like a sculpture of an atom. How cool is that? But anyway, before you can do that, you need to know about these things called atoms. So let's start off with size. They are ludicrously small. You could fit billions and billions on the point of a pin. We can, they're so small, you can never ever see them. Which is a bit of a contradiction, because how do we know they actually exist then? Uh, we don't do belief in science, we do proof. Um, and I think what I might do is leave the proof behind the atoms until later on today. I'm going to stick to these learning outcomes here. Uh, they are extremely small, is the answer. I might even ask you to go away and find, there's a point, there's, and this is a piece of information I'm going to ask you to put on your model, which is not going to be in the video today. I would love to know the actual size of a, let's go with a hydrogen atom, simplest atom in the universe. So this is a piece of information you have to find yourself and definitely include somewhere on your poster. Size of a hydrogen atom. Okay. Let's look at the first part of the, the point number two, learning outcome two, which is the structure of an atom. Um, structure of an atom looks something similar to this. There are three particles involved in atoms. If some of you, I know some of you from previous years and you're a bright bunch, so there's a good chance you've done some reading on this. You may be familiar with three terms, protons, neutrons, and electrons. Um, let's have a look at where these particles occur uh, in an atom. Let's have a look at the properties of some of these particles. And lastly, we'll see how they're arranged. So I think we'll start with a typical atom. Um, let's draw a typical atom. I think we'll do protons in red. We'll do electrons in blue. And we'll do neutrons in green. Um, so let's do a key here. Red circle is a particle called a proton. Um, I said blue, didn't I? For electrons. And lastly, we'll go with green for neutrons. Okay. Um, your typical atom uh, has a blob at the centre of it called the nucleus. Not nucleus. Okay, okay, that's an Americanism. A nucleus. So this blob at the centre contains all the protons and all the neutrons mushed together. Um, I think we'll add a couple more. Lost my red pen, there we go. They're just in random order. One, two, three, four, five, see. And then we'll have one, two, three, five, five, six. There we go. Um... So this area here in the centre of the atom is called the nucleus. The electrons we find round about the outside of the atom. So electrons float 
in a sort of fuzzy cloud all around the outside of the atom. Notice I've left space here. That space is intentional. Uh, you're not going to be able to copy that space accurately on your model because I haven't drawn it accurately there. Um, it turns out that, in fact, freaky as this is, most of atoms are empty space. And I've done the sums on this. Uh, and if you were to shrink or expand, sorry, expand this nucleus up to the size of an orange and stick it in the football park in Melbourne, which we will return to eventually, of course, um, and we can get our hands on some stuff there to try and have a go with some experiments based on this, then the nearest electron uh, would be how far away? Well, you can pause this video and take a guess if you want, but I've done the sums, and the answer is at the Keswick Bridge. And what's between these two is absolutely nothing. So atoms are mostly empty space. How come I can't put my hands through the desk then? If this is mostly empty space and so is that. Come back to me in sixth year and we will discuss the exact reason for that. I'm getting off track here. Um, I said we needed the particles. I, I said I wanted their properties and I want to see how they're arranged. These electrons for the moment, um, we're going to divide them up into layers. I think that's what we'll do. We'll divide them up into layers. This particular atom has got um, has got five protons. It's got six neutrons, and it will have also five, right color. Hey, get the right color. It will have five electrons because let's start with our first concept that we need to get into your head. However many atoms. Uh, however many electrons you have in an atom, I do apologise, you will have the same number of protons. So any atom has the same number of protons and electrons as each other. The other thing I wanted to get into your head was the charge on these particles. It turns out there's charges, electrical charges. Now we know that there's two types of electrical charge. There's positive and there's negative. Protons are always positive and electrons are always negative. One, two, three, four, five. So there's my five negative electrons floating about here like flies in a cloud. Uh, let's put this information on here. Protons are positive, uh, electrons are negative, and if you look, that means that any atom in the universe has got the same number of positives as negatives. And I'm hoping that you know from maths that when you have negative five, and you add positive 5 to it, you get nothing overall. Uh, is the overall charge on an atom is there for nothing. It has no charge overall, although it does contain positive and negative charges. Brilliant. We're getting there. So far, we know the location. The protons and the neutrons are in this thing here. I'm going to draw a circle around this, and I'm going to call this the nucleus. bit like the nucleus of a cell, actually. Nucleus just means centre, by the way, in Greek, I think, if I remember correctly. Um, electrons float around the outside in a cloud. Uh, we know that protons are positive, we know electrons are negative, and we know these are equal to each other, so they cancel out the charge completely, they wipe it out. There is uh, one other thing that I would like you to know, uh, two other things I'd like you to know, perhaps. I would like you to know the the weight of these particles, how much do they weigh? By the way, oh, I nearly forgot. I nearly forgot that one. What on earth is the charge on neutrons? Well, the clue is in the word. They are neutral. They have no charge. They're not positive. They're not negative. They're just not anything at all. Um, and the last piece of information is how much do these particles weigh? As you can probably imagine, they are so small that to try and weigh them in kilograms or grams is nonsense. You're talking 0, 0.000, and we can't be bothered with that. So what we did was we invented a brand new unit, and we uh, found that the protons had a mass of 1. So can we label this? Yeah, let's label this. Hold on two seconds. Let's label this as charge. And let's squeeze another wee column on here, and we'll label this as mass. I'm hoping you can see this in the video okay. Yeah, that's clear enough. Um, here are the answers to what the masses are of these particles. The mass of a proton is 1. 
If you're interested in one watt, it was a unit we made up. It's called atomic mass units, but don't worry, we'll just go with one. It's good enough for me. The mass of a neutron, it turns out, is also one. And these guys here are so tiny, which is why this drawing is perhaps not... I should redraw this to scale, shouldn't I? These guys are so tiny that the mass is more or less zero. There is a mass, but at National 5, National 4 level in chemistry, we don't care about it. It's more or less zilch. Great. Um, all we need to do is show how these particles are, in fact, arranged. Um, how do we show the number of particles with a symbol for an element? Let me get one more sheet of paper. I'll just pause this. Okay, on this sheet of paper, I'm going to show you how we uh, show a shorthand version of any element in the periodic table. Um, we have its symbol. Let's pick, uh, let's pick, in fact, you know what we'll pick? I know what we'll pick. We will pick boron. And you'll see why in just a second. So, we write the symbol, which is a capital B. You always start with capitals, by the way, for element symbols. If there's only one letter, it's just a capital. If there's two letters, the second one's always lowercase. Um, at the top here, we're going to write something called the mass number. And at the bottom, we're going to write something called the atomic number. And uh, let's start with the atomic number, because the good news is that's nice and simple. That is simply the number of protons. So we write that there. The mass number is, if I keep the same colour code as I did in the last page, is a combination of two different numbers. It's actually the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. The poor old electrons don't get a look in here anywhere. But we, of course, know that the number of protons happens to be equal to the number of electrons. So that's how you know that one. This is called nuclide notation, and this is how we write elements. Now, if we go back to here for a second, that means the nuclide notation for this particular atom is uh, boron, and its atomic number is 5, because that's the number of protons. And the top here, we find the number of neutrons plus the number of protons, so it, in fact, is that. That is the correct way to write the element boron. So what I'm going to ask you to do, guys, the good news is, that's the theory done. Um, we covered the um, size of an atom, ridiculously small. The structure of an atom, we looked at the particles, protons, neutrons, electrons. We looked at where you find these particles, and we looked at the properties of them. We looked something at the charge and the weight. Uh, and the last thing is this coding here. This is a code on how to uh, look at a symbol of an element and to figure out the number of protons and the number of neutrons plus the protons. So if I was to start again from scratch on here, what if I was to write this sodium? And I'm just going to pull these numbers out of my brain because I know what they are. I'm so sad I don't even have to go and look them up. Those are the two numbers. So that's the mass number for um, sodium, and this is the atomic number for sodium. Now you can pause this video and test yourself, because what I would like to do is I would like to know the number <coughs> of protons, neutrons, and electrons that are in this atom. Because you can figure them out from these two numbers. So pause this video, have a wee go at it on a piece of paper, see how you got on. Spoiler alert, when you press play again, I'll be giving you the answers. Okay, I just said a couple of minutes ago that the atomic number is equal to the number of protons. So that's easy, that makes that 11. We also said that however many protons you've got, that's the same number as the electrons. So that is also 11. 
The only tricky part really is the number of neutrons. But we know that 23 equals protons plus neutrons. And protons, of course, are 11. So 23 equals 11 plus... Don't know. So basically what you do is you take 11 away from this and you figure out the number you have to add to 11 to make 23. The answer is 12. So that's how many neutrons there are in this. This tells you the protons. This also tells you the electrons. Find the difference between do a takeaway sum and out pops the number of neutrons. So your assignment, guys, is to pick something in the first 20 elements. Uh, please don't go past 20 for technical reasons. It gets really complex there. But I would like you to find something in the first 20 elements of the periodic table. Take your pick, anyone you like. And I would like you to draw me a picture of it. I want you to include... Yeah, what information would I like to, you to include on this picture or model or sculpture or whatever it is you're going to do? I want you to include the number of protons, please. I want you to include the number of neutrons. Maybe this and a number of electrons, obviously. Maybe this whole thing here, somewhere on the diagram, sculpture, drawing, model, whatever. I want to know these numbers here. I want to know which element you're dealing with. And the last thing, remember please, I would love to know the size of a hydrogen atom. Those are your success criteria, guys. As far as actually what you want to use, you know, be as imaginative as you like. I appreciate that some of you might be hard up for stuff in the house. That's absolutely understandable in circumstances. That's why I will take just the drawing if you're absolutely stumped. Hopefully, though, you can have a bit of fun doing this. I loved your periodic table submissions. They were just amazing. Um, I've tried to include Mr. Crosshaw's running a sort of well-done board that we can show off some of your best work with. Uh, and I'd love to include uh, some of the pictures on that. Thanks for listening. I hope that was clear. Bye-bye.